Okay. Okay, we're going to start the lesson in about a minute. Okay, let's get started. I hope you guys, I see my microphone is going up and down, so I hope you guys can hear me properly today. Um, I did check the recording yesterday and you can hear everything on the recording. I did post the recording as well on the lesson one. So please, if you couldn't hear properly yesterday, please go and get the recording of the Zoom lesson so that you can cover everything that you need to uh, need to cover. Okay, so let's quickly go firstly to yesterday's worksheet and just review yesterday's worksheet. So what is the role of bacteria in the ecosystem? Um, we said they are decomposers, they are saprophytic, they break down dead organic material. They are also part of the nitrogen cycle. Uh, we said they play a role as pathogens as well, uh, controlling numbers of um, other organisms by being pathogens and making other um, sick. Um, and there's quite a few more you can add there, but those are the most important ones. Then, what would happen if bacteria, not question two, what would happen if bacteria became extinct? Okay. Um, nothing will decompose. We'll have dead bodies of plants and animals and organisms lying around everywhere. Um, and so diseased animals and plants would never return their materials to the soil. Then you had to read up a little bit about E. coli and answer the questions. Do you think that the relationship between E. coli is mutualistic? Yes, there's a mutualistic relationship there. We have E. coli in our intestines and that helps us to digest our food better, especially our proteins. And what happens is in turn for, for that favor they're doing us, we actually, they getting food, some of our food, to drive their life systems. Okay, so they help humans to digest their food in return for a food source. Discuss as a class the answer in question three and four and define the following term, pathogenic. Means that it's either a bacteria, a virus, or other microorganism that can cause disease. So pathogen is something that causes disease. Photosynthesis, the process by which green plants and some other organisms use sunlight to synthesize foods from carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis in plants generally involves um, chlorophyll and generates oxygen as a byproduct. What is a saprophyte? Sapra means dead, phyte means to eat, so eating the dead. Okay, so it's a plant, fungus, or microorganism that lives on dead or decaying organic material. You have to draw a diagram of the nitrogen cycle. And um, of course, over there, please note that I said that detail or pictures uh, is not needed. Okay, so we don't need to any detail. Um, but you need to have the words, you need to have the cycle that's written out. I just copy and paste, so I was a bit 
lazy in terms of that. But for you, please remember that it's part of the learning process for you to draw these things. Just give me two seconds. Good day. Not a, okay, it's fine. Let me just switch off my phone so I'm not, I didn't realize it was still on. Okay, now, people, then, from there, let's go on to the virus and discuss the virus in today's lesson. Okay, so viruses. We're going to go into a bit more detail on viruses today. Okay, so firstly, we go to a cell. And we say that the cell is a basic unit of life and that all plants and animals are made out of cell, uh, cells. Uh, either whether you're unicellular and only have one cell or multicellular and you have many cells. And they come in different shapes and sizes. But when you take a look at a virus, a virus isn't a cell yet doesn't have a cell membrane, it doesn't have uh, organelles, um, and so we don't classify viruses as cells yet. Also, another factor that you need to consider here is that viruses aren't even seen as alive yet. When you take a look at the seven features of life, movement, reproduction, feeding, and, 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 you will see that a virus is not a living organism yet. We still classify it as a non-living thing. Okay, so viruses do not display any of the living characteristics and metabolic activities of cells and therefore they are, for example, also only able to reproduce, or we call it a replicate, inside of another cell, a host, a host cell, which in the case of COVID-19 is us, or our cells. Are they cells? No. We say that viruses, we call them acellular, they're not cells yet, um, and then and um, basically, if you take a look at the structure of the cell, which we'll do in detail in a moment, there's tiny particles of genetic material, DNA or RNA, surrounded by a protein outside, a protein coat. Okay, so on the inside, they've got a central DNA. On the outside, they've got a protein coat, DNA or RNA, nucleic acid, and then we also find that they have quite distinctive shapes. Now, you would have seen the shape of um, a coronavirus by now because it's been on the news and it's been everywhere and it's on posters everywhere. So they have, different viruses have very distinct shapes. And especially if you talk about a coronavirus, corona means round, which means it's, the coronavirus will have a roundish shape almost like a crown shape. Um, people, there is a bacteriophage. Now we, we use the bacteriophage as a simplified diagram to show what a virus could look like. If you take a look at a coronavirus, basically what we find is we just find that section, the top section there, and we'll have little knobblies sticking out from the sides over there. Uh, but that, that's, that's a coronavirus shape. This is a bacteriophage shape. Let me explain to you where the word comes from because you might confuse, confuse this now with a bacteria. It is actually feeding on a bacteria. Phage means feeding. Phage means feeding. And then it feeds on a bacteria. It lives off bacteria. So bacteriophage, living on a bacteria. So if we take a look at the structure, you don't need to draw the three-dimensional structure as you see here. What you're going to draw is you're going to draw the two-dimensional structure in the worksheet, and you will then add the extra additional um, 
labels that's not on this side so there we've got some genetic in material on the inside not surrounded by a cell membrane like we find with cells and we've got a protein coat on the outside in the case of the bacteriophage we have a sheath or tail and we also look, have things that look like legs it's actually tail fibers and a base plate now what it would do is when it gets to a cell and please go watch the videos that are posted on google classroom because it shows this very nicely it would actually sit on top of the cell on the outside so the cell would sit over here the cell is quite big a bit bigger and the bacteriophage will inject its genetic material into the cell and then it will combine with the genetic material of the cell and then it starts producing instead of producing your own proteins it starts producing your own cells start producing virus proteins to make new viruses so please go and watch the videos on google classroom um, especially the flu attack one. It shows it so nicely. Okay, so the body of a virus never inserts a cell. It's only the genetic material or the DNA that actually goes into the cell. Characteristics, let's just review. No metabolic activities, so it's not living. It's acellular, it's not a cell yet. It doesn't respirate yet. It cannot produce on its own. It needs a host to reproduce. And they are parasitic on both plants, animals, viruses, uh, plus, sorry, not right, plants, animals, protists, and bacteria. And they are pathogens, which means that they cause disease. Okay, grade 11. That is it for today's lesson. And now it's another short lesson. We're going to increase the amount each time that we go through the work, but let's review on what you have to do for today. Okay, so you will see I've placed, and I'm doing it now, I'm posting it right now. I'm also gonna post this lesson, this recording in a moment, but there is what you need to go through today. There's the notes, there's the worksheet, there is two, other videos you need to watch so the virus video the basic introduction and then the flu attack video you need to watch this is a very nice animation yes please go and watch it and it shows how the virus works very well okay and that is what you need to do for today and on monday we'll have lesson three and we'll review the worksheet on lesson two okay let's go to the chat box quickly. I see there's no questions in the chat yet. Uh, guys, you're welcome to put up your hand and have questions at this stage. Or if you want to unmute and have questions or just put it in the chat box if you are feeling too self-aware. I will be posting the, the work again, uh, the recording again under lesson two, like I did with lesson one yesterday. Are there any other questions? Not really complicated work so far. My, most of this is memorization. Okay, then I'm going to end off our lesson for today. Thank you very much for attending the lesson. And um, in the next week, you're going to see also our lessons, unfortunately, we'll have to increase in terms of time to cover all the work that you need to cover. But I'm just easing you guys into. Next week, we're also going to have a lot of Google quizzes coming up on the work that we've already done. Thank you very much. And I will see you next week.